Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at a non-homogeneous Cauchy-Euler equation. We're going to find the particular solution using the method of variation of parameters. And we have the steps for that over on the side in case it's been a while since you've looked at that. So step one, we're going to find the complementary solution. Step two, with variation of parameters, finding your particular solution. You always have a solution of this form u1 times y1 and u2 times y2 and you have nice integral formulas for u1 and u2 you just need to plug everything into them y1 y2 the Ronskian, and most importantly for this example the non-zero right hand side g of x now for this problem there's actually a trick and it really tests how well you understand the method of variation of parameters and the theorem from which these u1 and u2 expressions come from. We'll get to that at some point, what that trick is, but let's get started with the first part, finding the complementary solution. So we're gonna take the right-hand side, replace it with zero, and we get a Cauchy-Euler equation. We know how to solve that. Always start with solutions of the form y equals x to the m, y as a power of x, calculate your derivatives but y prime and y double prime get multiplied by x and x squared which bump the powers back up so everything contains x to the m all right the work is very similar and repetitive so you can always expect to factor x to the m out when you plug everything back in so let's go ahead and do that and convert this cauchy euler equation to the auxiliary equation for m so from our first term here, we should get factors of m times m minus 1. All right, go to your derivative term. xy prime gives you a factor of m, but we have minus 3. So minus 3m. And go to now your function term. You get, well, there's no factor of m, but we have a factor of 3. So plus 3. Should go very quick from here, distribute. And it looks like you have some like terms. Do a little basic math. And looks like this one factors, looks like this factors as m minus one times m minus three. And looks like we get, in this case, two distinct real values for m. Looks like we get m as 1 and m as 3. All right, so we have our complementary solution. Each value of m gives you a power of x. So we get our complementary solution, a constant, times x to the m. In this case, we'll go with m as 1, so x to the 1. and then plus another constant times x to the other power, 3. So we get our y1 and y2 as x and x cubed. Okay, now we're going to jump to now finding the particular solution. I always like to immediately calculate the Ronskian as soon as I find y1 and y2. So let's go ahead and do that. So calculating the Ronskian of x and x cubed. Set this up as your 2 by 2 determinant. And if you calculate this, it should go very quickly here. Notice when you multiply, you're going to get x cubes. So here you get 3x cubed minus x cubed. Looks like this comes out to 2x cubed for the Ronskian. Since the Ronskian is non-zero, that tells you these two solutions, y1 and y2, are linearly independent, which is what you want. The only other thing we need to implement your formulas for u1 and u2, besides y1, y2, and the Ronskian, you need the non-zero right-hand side, g of x. So now if we take a look at our 
non-homogeneous ODE. Let me just go ahead and write that down again. We have it as x squared y double prime minus 3x y prime plus 3y equals 2 x to the fourth e to the x. And we just look at our right hand side and we identify this, that non zero right hand side, as 2x to the fourth times e to the x, right? No, that is not the correct g of x. This is where the trick comes in. Be careful. The theorem from which we got these formulas for u1 and u2, let's go back to it. This is the details that you really need to pay attention to. Notice how we identify g of x here. y has a non-constant coefficient, a function y prime also has a non-constant coefficient, another function, but what's your coefficient of y double prime here? One. So, in order to properly identify g of x, you need to make sure in front of your second derivative term, y double prime, there's a one. And you can see here, there is not. There's an x squared in front of that second derivative. So, g of x is not 2x to the fourth times e to the x, because this non-homogeneous ODE is not in that form where in front of the second derivative term, there's a factor of one. Now there's a simple fix for this. We just take our non-homogeneous differential equation and we're gonna divide everything by x squared. So if we do that, looks like it converts dividing by x squared. We now get a one in front Divide by x squared, we'll get minus 3 over x y prime. Divide by x squared, we'll get 3 over x squared y. And most importantly, divide the right-hand side by x squared as well. And looks like that cancels out to leave us with 2x squared e to the x. Now we can properly identify our non-zero right-hand side g of x. Now, correctly, g of x that we're gonna use is 2x squared e to the x. If you saw that from the beginning, that is awesome. You probably won't get tricked, but learn from this. We cannot identify g of x in this form but we can here. So now we have everything we need, y1, y2, the Ronskian, and now the correct g of x. We just need to plug everything in and evaluate those integrals. Next up, evaluating those integrals. We have everything we need. Let's go ahead and first find what u1 of x comes out to. So we'll just plug everything in. We get the integral of negative y2, negative x cubed, times g of x, which is correctly 2x squared e to the x. Remember, we have to divide off the x squared to put it in the correct form to identify g of x. And we divide by our Ronskian, 2x cubed, and it looks like we can simplify that considerably. Looks like I can cancel out a factor of x cubed and a factor of two. So it looks like we're left with the integral of negative x squared e to the x. And now we can solve by integrating by parts twice. We're gonna use the shortcut known as the tabular method. So I always like to set this up as three columns, your alternating signs, your choice for u, and then your choice for dv. Always start with a plus. You would choose your u here as negative x squared. Maybe x squared if you factored the negative out. I'm just going to include it. And you would choose your dv as e to the x. Your u column, 
keep differentiating. So we get for the first derivative, negative two X, then negative two, and then to zero. That tells you integration by parts is gonna terminate. And this column, your DV column, you always integrate to get V. So successively integrate. And that's nice because that just becomes e to the x all the way through. Alternate your signs, plus, minus, plus, minus. And then you extract your uv terms as these signed diagonals. All right, we can easily write down what this integral comes out to. Looks like here all my diagonals contain e to the x, so I can factor that out. Looks like we get a minus x squared. Looks like we get a plus 2x. And looks like we get a minus 2. And that's all times e to the x. And that is our u1. All right, from here, we can now find u2. And again, we plug everything in, but our formula says we have now the integral of y1 x times g of x, 2x squared e to the x, and then divided by your wrong scheme, which is 2x cubed. And it looks like that simplifies nicely. The numerator has a 2x cubed factor. Same in the denominator, so it looks like this just simplifies to the integral of e to the x. And we know that, that's just e to the x. Again, worth pointing out in your formulas for u1 and u2 of x, after you've integrated, you don't need the plus c's, the integration constants. All right, we can now write down what our particular solution comes out to. We have u1 of x. We have u2, and we already know what y1 and y2 are, so it's just a matter of plugging that in. And let's go ahead and write it out. Looks like we're gonna get u1 of x, negative x squared plus two x minus two times e to the x. And don't forget, you have u1 times y1. y1 was x. And then we add to that u2 e to the x times y2, and we have y2 as x cubed. All right, now this might look a little bit complicated, but one thing we can do, notice each term has an e to the x in it, so you might think of factoring that out, but maybe distribute that x through parentheses to see if you have some like terms. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna distribute the x through the parentheses. So we'll get minus x cubed plus two x squared minus two x, that's times e to the x. And let me just rearrange these terms. I'll put the x cubed in front of the exponential. And you can probably see what's gonna happen if you were to factor e to the x out, you have negative x cubed, positive x cubed. Those cancel out and looks like you're left with 2x squared minus 2x all times e to the x. And that is your particular solution. As soon as you find your particular solution, always write down the full solution the complementary solution plus the particular solution makes you feel like you've accomplished something writing down the solution. So we get our full solution here. The complementary solution, C1x plus C2x cubed. And then we add to that the particular solution, which we just found using the method of variation of parameters. It's actually pretty nice here once you incorporate tricks like this with the tabular method, these integrals usually aren't that bad if you know some shortcuts. So add your particular solution 
2x squared minus 2x times e to the x, and we are done. This is a really good problem. It's what you might call a trick question, since we cannot identify g of x in the original form. g of x here was not 2x to the fourth times e to the x. And again, the reason for that, this non-homogeneous Cauchy Euler equation is not in this form, where the second derivative term has a one in front of it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned how to solve this type of problem and not fall for the trick here of incorrectly identifying g of x. Divide off your factor of x squared and it falls into place from there. Support the channel, like and subscribe.